Hey guys, this is Grant. Um, I just got done test uh, firing one of my homemade model, model rocket engines. And if you've seen my videos in the past, you've noticed that I've had problems with this before. I'm um, able to make the fuel slash the engine um, just hold up to the pressure. Anyhow, so I actually had a successful launch um, firing. And I'll have that video in just one second. But first, I'm going to go and show you the engine. Um, this is post launch, so I've already done it. Um, so it's coming on over here. So this is it here, um, this and this nozzle here. And this is basically the main chamber here. This is where all the grains slide in on this end. And I wanted to be able to reuse these engines, um, so I made it threaded, and then here's the nozzle we'll thread on there. And so basically here's the convergence end, end and the divergence end. And then I got the throat in the center, obviously, there. And I used um, some water putty as my to be able to form the cone inside there, and then a washer, obviously, to serve as my throat diameter um, to give it some rigidity. So this is one of the ones I had left over actually, it turned out pretty bad as you can see the fuel's cracked so I didn't end up using this grain here, but essentially what I did is I used um, the same size PVC pipe as my form, as if you've seen in my other videos, and then I actually used a thicker paper this time. Um, my last launch um, blew up, and I think it could have been because it ended up burning from the outside as well, and so it um, over pressurized and then too quickly blew up, so I used a higher quality um, paper here that actually is got a little plastic in it so it doesn't burn very well. So anyhow, um, yeah that's that and I'll go ahead and show you the launch video but anyhow this is my setup. Um, pretty simple actually. It's got some more. This is the um, the water putty as well up here with screws to give it some more rigidity. rigidity. So anyhow, I'll go and show you the video now. Alright, so this is the software I used um, to design my model rocket engine. I just want to kind of show you this real quick. Um, this is how I estimated how the performance went. I didn't actually measure um, the actual output um, as far as the force of the rocket. Um, so I don't know exactly what I got, but this is kind of what I estimated here. So um, this is just where you plug in all your um, details like motor chamber, the diameter, 25 millimeters going down here and then so this is actually your grains, the propellant grains and so like I had a 5 millimeter core, um, 24 millimeter outside diameter. Um, I had three grains in my engine and they were 40 millimeters long. And we'll go and go on down here. And so target PSI actually was a lot lower um, than I initially was going to go for. Um, that's determined by your throat diameter which mine was um, basically 10 millimeters, a little bit, a little bit less than that. So in this software here, you actually change your desired pressure and it automatically changes your throat diameter. Um, so per preferably the higher pressure you get better performance, but I had already created my throat diameter. I didn't realize I should have made it maybe a little bit smaller, but that's alright. I still had good performance. Maybe in the future I might go for a little bit more. You don't want to go too much because PVC has a maximum PSI rating of definitely no more than 500. Um, for rockets, I would I would not venture above the 400 range, just because you're dealing with heating and other issues. So we'll go and go down here. Um, you can click through and run, and basically this is your pressure graph. Um, it calculates out, and then performance, and then we'll go on here to output, and this is the um, yes, this is the output data that it estimates. So you got total impulse 102 newton seconds, average thrust 90 newtons, um, thrust time. 1.132 seconds, um, which is actually incredibly accurate. Um, it's got a motor classification of G. I didn't know how close this would be, but it's saying 1.3 seconds. Here's the graph down here of the, actually the, the um, thrust chart versus time. And so if I, in fact, go over here real quick. Um, so if you see this, um, this basically, this is our video here you've seen already. You see this sound curve here? This is basically just this is just sound data um, that it's pulling from the actual from the actual firing. Look how closely that matches our actual force um, force curve here. It's I mean it's not exact, but the time the the uh, 
time span of this here was, I believe, 1.4 seconds. I'll go back through it, but anyhow, I'll have that data up in a second. But it was extremely close to our actual resulting um, data. So I would guesstimate this is probably pretty accurate. Never really know in the future. I'd like to do a actual um, test of this, um, see how much thrust we get out of it. A uh, way I can do that is I can put it on a board um, that's been um, calibrated to a certain weight and then measure that out with my, with my camera and see how much the board moves as the um, engine fires. So I've seen some, there's some other cool um, videos on YouTube of people doing that. Um, so you can kind of look into that in case I don't. Anyhow, that's that.